Are you ready for the second quarter? Are you ready for the second quarter? The first quarter of the year is over. It's April 1st, April Fool's Day. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to share with you today some, some the opposite of being a fool. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about wisdom and, and how important that is as we, uh, as we jump into this episode of Chasing Greatness. Welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast where we help you on Mondays win at work. On Wednesdays, we talk about winning at home. And ultimately on Fridays, we want to talk about winning at life. And if you've been listening for a while, you know that occasionally I'll mention the fact that I'm a Bible reader. I I love to uh, read the Bible every day. It it helps me really as I think about perspective and and just gives me um, a shot at having the right heart and, and the right motives and the right action. If I don't do that, I find that it's easy for me to to, to drift in the way I think, and ultimately I can, I can be a little more foolish in my thinking. And so April Fool's Day, uh, I, I, I don't want to be a fool. I know you don't want to be a fool. You wouldn't be listening here if you did. I want us to be wise leaders, and, and I think today i got some stuff that, that I'll share with you that is going to help with that. And so welcome to Chasing Greatness. This is, this is going to be a great little uh, opportunity for us here. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I want to go ahead and let you know. Because if you don't like the Bible, you're you're not going to like the next few Fridays. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, in in the spirit of Easter's coming up, I'm I'm excited about Easter Sunday here in just a, uh, a couple of weeks. And uh, so I, in on on Fridays this next couple of weeks, I want us to focus a little bit when we think about winning at life. I've got I've got a couple of things out of the Bible that I'm going to share with you. I think they'll be helpful. And so. Uh, whether you read the Bible or not, I, and whether you believe in God or not, I think the things that we talk about are going to be helpful uh, as you think about your life and and your leadership the next uh, few days here. So this week we've been talking about hard stuff. We're all facing difficult circumstances. On Monday, I, I did a whole episode on uh, what happens when your team loses its dream or when you lose your dream, and we we focused on that. I gave you some things that will help you, and I gave you some warnings, some things that are going to help uh, not help, but some things that are ultimately going to crush your dreams if you're not careful, if you're not aware of them. So hope you'll go back and listen to that if you haven't done so. Uh, to, on Wednesday, we talked about some of the seasons of life at home, some of the the, the things that we can learn there. And we looked at three Ps uh, that when we face a problem, that that, that it's not necessarily personal and, and it shouldn't grow out and become pervasive. It shouldn't affect every area of our life. And ultimately, when we when we're up against something, we have this tendency to think it's going to always be this way, and it's really not. It's it, the idea was permanent, there. So again, if you didn't listen to that, I, I would encourage you to to uh, go back and and uh, check that out. Uh, it it was it was fun uh, looking at those things. But today, I want us to look at this Bible passage that uh, I'm just going to read you four or five verses here. If if you can just give me you know just a second here, and I've got uh, this this this. Uh, basically passage I've been reading in in the book of James. James uh, is a book in the New Testament. James was the brother of Jesus, and he was a pastor, and he wrote this letter, and and here's what he says. It starts out, it says, James was a servant of of God and and of Jesus, which was kind of cool that he's a servant. You know, he's he's like, my brother, (laughs) it's like, you know, crazy stuff going on there. But, but But he writes this letter to what he calls the 12 tribes. Now, if you don't know anything about uh, the Old Testament, there were 12, what was called 12 tribes of Israel. And he says that this, this letter is being written to the 12 tribes who were scattered among the nations. These people had been persecuted. They'd been beaten. They'd been, you know, they're hunting down basically Christians at the time and they're, they're scattered. And so he writes this letter to them. And so I want you to think about your problem, your biggest thing you're facing right now in life. Chances are, you're not being flogged. You're not being, you know, beaten in the streets. You're not being chased out of your home. Uh, there are people in the world where that's happening right now. But chances are, if you're listening to this, things are hard for you, but they're not that hard. And so, uh, I want, I want to, um, again, I think perspective is important here. But here's what he says. He says to these people who have it as bad as it can be. He says, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now think about that. He's saying to these people. Consider it joy that you're going through hard stuff. I don't know about you, but that's a good reminder that when things get hard, there actually can be something good that comes out of that. And and he goes on to say, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It's actually like a, it's, it's almost like a gift when you go through something hard 
that you 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 actually can have perseverance or resilience on the backside of that. Now that that, that he's not saying God is making things hard for you. I mean, I, I I don't believe that at all. I don't believe God makes things hard for us. But but I do think think when things get hard, God can use that to help us uh, have perseverance and resilience. And ultimately, we can actually help other people down the road when, when things are hard for them. He, he goes on to say, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. In other words, when we go through hard stuff, it actually can lead to maturity in our life. We can grow from that. We can we can gain wisdom. Um and he, and he says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature not and, and complete, not lacking anything. Like, like to grow and have an integrated life, a life of integrity, a life that is whole, that really ought to be the goal, uh, whether you're a God follower or not. It, it, we, we ought to want to have a life that, that matches up at work, at home, in life. I mean, there ought to be, there ought to be some uh, integrity there. That, that math word integer is a whole number. Our lives should experience some of that. And then, and then here's the here's the wild thing. It's it's. I mean, this is um, this last verse, but I want to share one more. With you. He says, "If any of you lacks wisdom, remember that whole April Fool's thing. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you." I love that word because what happens is I go through something hard. I'm in the midst of a trial. I may I may even want to blame God for the things that are hard in my life. I get into a, a, a circumstance that I don't think I have control over. I, I, maybe I personalize it, like we talked about on Wednesday. Maybe I think it's pervasive. It's affecting other areas of my life. And maybe I even think it's going to always be this way. It's going to be perfect. And some of us are up against things that that are really hard, and they're going to be hard forever. I mean, they, they may be permanent. I'm not, I'm not saying that you won't face some challenges that are permanent. But he, but he goes on to say, if you lack wisdom, if, you, if you've lost perspective and you need wisdom, Actually, God wants to give you wisdom and, and not just give it to you. It says he gives generously. He wants to bless you and help you be a wise person. Now, I want, to, I want us to think about wisdom here for a second. It, it, I think so many times we, we try to um, just make the right decision without thinking about what's the wise decision. And I think sometimes we, we, just, we just start chasing after what we want or we start you know, looking at our circumstances and we don't really consider like what's right. And so I want to, I want to think about this here for a second with you. Like, where can you get wisdom? Well, I think you can get it from the Bible. I mean, obviously I'm reading from it. I think that's a, that's one source. I think that's the ultimate source. The, the, the Bible even reminds us that the fear of the Lord, and it's not just God's up in heaven striking us down. If we, if that's what we think about God, we really have a a very distorted view of who God is. God is gentle and merciful and compassionate, compassionate, and He's loving toward us. That's what it says. And so, but but understanding and having a healthy understanding of who God is and who we are—that's the beginning of wisdom. That's what makes someone wise to understand that that there is a God, and I'm not Him. He He is like my life is a gift, and it's been created, and I want to live my life under authority. And I hope you do as well. If if you Understand that that's that's the first step toward wisdom. But there's some other things that we can do to uh, to get wisdom. So one of the things I would recommend you do is hang around with wise people. Who around you do you know that is wise? That would be a really good person to spend some time with, and maybe to to receive some counsel from. So if you're going through something really hard right now, I, w would you consider having a conversation with somebody who's really wise and and asking what do you think about this? How do you, let me let me get your perspective on this and. And maybe we need multiple wise people because if we're not careful, we may think somebody's wise and they tell us something and we don't consider all that's going on. But but I think so many times I want to do what I want to do and I'm not going to listen to anybody else. And that's a dangerous place to be when I'm in the midst of trials, when I'm in the midst of hard circumstances. And and that's going to really... Um, that's going to hurt my maturity and that's going to keep me from understanding that perseverance could actually be a result of this. And so uh, one of the things I can do is, again, go back to a source of truth, the Bible. But secondly, talk to wise people. Um, another thing I would say to do when you want, if you want to be wise is, is learn from, uh, from your mistakes. 
So I was talking to a leader just recently who's trying to make a decision, and and it was similar to another decision that they had made. And I said, you should borrow your own wisdom and, and go back and ask yourself, how did it turn out the first time when you did this? And go go think through that. Did you like the way that turned out? Did you not like the way that? You you can actually borrow wisdom from yourself if you think back to, you know, decisions you've made in the past when you when you made decisions without counsel, when you made decisions without you know, asking for wisdom when you made decisions on your own, how'd that turn out for you? And if you're happy with that, you know, get, roll with it. But, but chances are, if you're like me, you, I, I've made a lot of bad decisions on my own. If I, if I really didn't think through what, what, what are the long-term effects of this? What, how's it going to affect other people? How's it going to affect me? And, and what would God, in my case, what would God think about this? I would ask myself that question. And so, um, I, I think it's important to, you know, have a source of truth, listen to wise people, uh, learn from your past mistakes. But another thing I think that really wise people do is they learn from the mistakes of other people. And so if you've got some people around you who have messed up, what can you learn from that? And, and I, th- I think we can begin to, to build wisdom and, um, and, and be- begin to think in, in a, diff- a wise way, not a foolish way. Again, uh, it, it, April Fools may feel funny today, but it is not funny when you see somebody acting like a fool. There's just nothing funny about that. And so many times we get ourselves into situations because we're not thinking like a wise person. And so uh, I would encourage you to to really lean into this concept of wisdom right now, especially as it relates to your hard circumstance. You've got something going on right now. It's very emotional. Uh, maybe you got something going on physically that's very hard. Maybe something spiritually in your mind or in, in your heart right now is not like it ought to be. I, I, I challenge you today. Here, here's my homework to you. Is, is You might even, if you're physically able, you might just get down on your knees and say, God, uh, would you give me wisdom? Would you help me to be a wise person in, in the way I look at this situation I'm up against? Would you help me to understand that you're not the one who caused this, but you can use this? You can bring perseverance in my life. You can actually bring me to a place of maturity in my life. I think back to all these places in my life where I've made bad decisions or things haven't gone well or things have just been been harder than they should have been, maybe maybe because of me or maybe uh, just, just around me. And uh, if I've paid attention and I've learned and I've come out on the other side more wise, I've, I've literally been able to take some of those things and not make the same mistakes twice and, and maybe even more importantly, I've been able to help some other people with that as well. So I, you know, again, I don't know where you are, but, but I would encourage you to, if you got something hard right now, uh, don't neglect getting down on your knees and saying, Hey God, would you just help me to be wise? His, his word literally says, if you lack wisdom, all you have to do is ask. And I want to give it to you generously. And then here's the cool thing. If we get wisdom, and, and, and we, we begin to think clearly and we get that perspective back and then we'll act on that. Uh, there are blessings that I really believe that there are blessings that come on your life when you do what you're supposed to do, when you make the right decision, you make the wise decision. A wise decision is always the best decision, especially if we're in the midst of hardship. If you pile bad decisions on top of bad circumstances, you're going to have a bad life. But if you'll, if you'll be wise in the midst of even your pain, I think you can end up with perseverance. You can, you can end up with maturity. You can end up complete. You can, you can literally have that integrous life as opposed to think about the, the opposite of that. We're just doing what we want to do. We're doing what's right in our own eyes. We're not listening to truth. We're not listening to counsel. And then, and then things get disintegrated. They get blown apart. And I know a bunch of people right now who are struggling. They're just, their lives just feel like a mess because they're not uh, seeking wisdom from above. They're not learning from what they're going through and ultimately, they're, they're, they're missing out on the gift of hard circumstances. Our circumstances probably aren't nearly as hard as what they were to these readers that James was, James was writing to. These people have been scattered around, but our circumstances are real, and they're real to us. And, and perseverance can be right around the corner if we'll, if we'll literally seek wisdom. So I hope you will. I, I believe if you will, it'll help you win at life, and ultimately, it'll help you be great. Uh, not just you be great, but you're going to learn some things through your pain. It's going to be able to help other people as well, which which is what chasing greatness is all about. So uh, let's let's go into the weekend. Let's let's maybe uh, let's maybe see if we can regain some perspective on what's hard around us, and and maybe 
even find some blessings in the midst of that pain. All right, love you guys. I'll see you on Monday uh, for our next episode of Chasing Greatness.